Hey, how's it going? And today I'm going to show you how to create a multi-purpose button without using an overlay. And so it looks something like this, that you would hit play and you've got this button and it starts as a start button. And then you hit start and then it triggers whatever logic you have to start the game. And then the button now changes to say quit. And now we're ready to quit the game. So then we go quit and then it triggers whatever logic you need to quit the game. And so I'll show you how to do this in just a minute. Okay, and we're back, and hopefully this won't take very long. So to get started on this, we're just going to right-click and create our user interface, and we'll just go user widget here. We'll just leave it called new widget blueprint, and then we'll go ahead and dock it. And then for this, because we're going to have two functions on one button, which is really cool to know, is we're just going to get a canvas panel, because that helps everything stay organized. This is supposedly computationally intensive, but I think if you just have one, that's not a problem. And I want to say, what isn't computationally <laughs> intensive? And then we're just going to get a button. And we're going to drag this down on the canvas panel. And this is what's kind of tricky is we just need one text. And you could try to use an overlay for this, but this actually works, I think, better. So we're going to size to fit on the button. We'll leave the button called button, and it's a variable. On the text, we're going to leave it called text block. And I'll just call this button text, just so I know what it is. And this is it needs to be a variable. And we'll just compile and save that. We'll click on the button. We can collapse this. And then just drag it right down in the middle. And then the next thing we do is a little bit of grunt work. We just have to set this up to display. So what we're going to do is go into the first person and we're going to create our very own blueprint just for this. So we're going to go ahead and click blueprint and go actor and we'll leave it called new blueprint. And then here we're going to go into the event graph and on event begin play. We're just got to get something set up. So we got to create our widget to display. And in this case, it's just a single button. So it almost doesn't seem like it's even worth the hassle, but can't really do a print string on this so and then there's our new widget blueprint and then of course we're going to add to viewport add to viewport and there's that and then we have to go ahead and enable the input here for the mouse so we'll go enable input and then we're going to go ahead and get our player controller I think I was hoping someday they'll have just a function that does all this for you because this is such a repeat thing to do, you know. And then off of here, we're going to go set show mouse cursor. Make sure to click that box there. And then we'll just drag this down into here. And then we'll drag off one more time and go enable click events set. And we'll make sure to click that box and put that in there. And we're done here. That's all we need to do. This will just display our widget. In fact, we can just hit play. And why is nothing showing? Again, something should be showing. Oh, do you know why? Because I didn't drag the blueprint onto the screen. Sorry about that. Okay, and then we go play. And there's our text block. And it's just showing text block now. So what we're going to do is we're going to have this button serve multiple purposes by changing its text. And the change of the text will serve as a driver for the functionality of the button, which is really awesome. So I always want to say that says stimulating. <laughs> so anyway, back into our new widget blueprint. And all we have to do is all our work is just over here now. So we need to create two variables and we'll come up here to variables and the first one is just going to be called start and it's going to be a text variable and we it doesn't need to be public and so we can hit control d and we're going to make another one and this is going to be called quit and it doesn't need to be public either we can compile and save now on start we want to set its default value to say exactly that start and the same thing for the text, or quit, I mean, the text on quit is quit. And we can compile and save that, and then just make sure that we have those values in there. 
great. And these are just local variables. And now here is our button. So what we're going to do is we're going to set the text on our button to say start. So we're going to drag off of here and go get start. And then we're going to drag off of here our button text. And all we can do is get it. And then we're going to set the text on our button. So set text. And so as soon as the game starts, this script will be called once and it will set the button to say start. And we can go and test that real fast. Come in here, hit play, and now our button says start instead of text block. So that's great. And believe it or not, we're on the home stretch. This is the really the meat and potatoes of this whole thing right here. So now we've got this on button clicked functionality. So if we click on the button itself and we come down here to on clicked, this is what's going to drive everything here. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to assess what the text is on our button, what the text says. So in this case, we've just set it to say start. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to get our button text here. And here is a very awesome function that I didn't even know existed, but it's called get accessible text. And this is so cool and so helpful because it allows you to create a branch logic based on what the button actually says and thereby gives you some flow control and multifunction purpose to your button. So it's a really nifty feature. So what we're going to do is we're going to see if the button says start on it, we want it to do one thing. If the button says quit, we want it to do something else. So how we assess for that is now we can just drag off of here and go equal. And this is cool too, because you can have it, you can cut yourself some slack and make it case insensitive. So as long as you get the words, it doesn't matter case, as long as you get the letters right. So that's a real nifty feature right there that you have that level of forgiveness in this cold, cruel world. And that's awesome. Now we can hit B on the keyboard and click and we have a branch node so we're going to go into our branch and our condition is does the button whoops I need to get start does the button say start and if it does then we want to initiate this branch of game logic so in our game what this would actually be would be our game logic so whatever the game is. So you can just imagine this branching off to whatever you're, you want to start, whatever logic you want to start. In this case, we're just going to do a print string. So it's not much of a game logic here. But then I would just type in here that the game has started. Game started here. So this print string would actually represent whatever game logic you, you want to start playing. As soon as that's done, then we want to go ahead and reset our button text. So we can grab this up here and hit Control D. And as soon as our game is started or whatever, then we're going to reset the text, our button text, to say quit. So we'll get quit and we'll plug this in here. Now actually I realized I didn't need to create, create variables for this. I could have just typed it in there, but I don't know, it just seems like it keeps it more logical to have it, the variable just for that, setting that. And then the last thing is, if it says, doesn't say start, and it says something else, then we know that it's time to quit the game because that's the only other logic that we, we have in it. So off of here, we can just go print string, and this logic would be your game logic to quit the game or whatever else you wanted the game to do. So here it would say quitting the game. And then of course we can leave this to stay on the screen a little bit longer. So this is 20 seconds or let's yeah 20 seconds let's say. And then here we'll do the same thing. We'll leave it on a little bit longer, 20 seconds. And if I got this right, that's a lot of seconds on that. 20. Okay, 20 seconds. And as far as I know, that's all there is to it.
This is really the key of the whole thing here, this get accessible text, because it's going to allow you to switch logic based on whatever the button says. And then you can change what the button says by resetting what it says. So there's actually no need for an overlay in this particular setup. So anyway, let's come in and see if it works. Hit play, start, the game has started. So now all whatever game logic I would have, now the button's changed to quit, and I click quit, and I see the game, oh, the game started is still on there because I had it on there for 20 seconds. So it should come off of there. So let me see, yeah. But let me, let me just, so I'm not getting confused on that, let me just set this for just short, like two seconds. I wanna make sure I'm not double printing something. Compile, save, let's see. So print, start, game started, off it goes. Quit, and then quitting the game, yes. So that would do it for you. I hope you found this helpful. Take care, have a great day, and if you found this helpful, please consider subscribing. It does help me. Thank you very much, and have a great day.